Taller Puertorriqueño held the Arturo Chambor Symposium, a one-day event dedicated to address issues of the African diaspora in Latinx cultures. Welcome everybody to Taller Puertorriqueño and to our annual Arturo Chambor Symposium. I want you to please mark down on your calendars this event takes place every year on the last Saturday of February. We uh, conceptualize it for it to happen in February to make the point that as Latinos, Latin Americans, we have every reason to celebrate Black History Month as well. Dr. Ebony Loren explains the reason that led to the creation of the symposium. Empezamos a cocinar la idea de hacer un espacio en donde nos sentáramos a dialogar y explorar las contribuciones de África, América Latina y buscar formas de hacer de tener mejores puentes de comunicación y colaboración con la comunidad africanoamericana. Esto es principio, esto es finales de los 90. This year's theme focused on the social perceptions and construction of beauty. Peruvian activist Monica Carrillo highlights the diversity of Latin American culture. Entonces, este, yo creo que, o sea, si estamos aquí en Estados Unidos pensando en lo afrolatino o pensando en los afrodescendientes que vivimos en Latinoamérica, es importante que recordemos que lo latino no existe en América del Sur. Nosotros nos definimos por nuestras identidades regionales, caribeñas, de la región andina o por el país, no necesariamente bajo esa concepción unificadora de lo latino. O sea, ¿por qué menciono eso? Porque cuando hablamos de belleza, eh, en nuestro contexto tenemos pues una cultura indígena, una cultura amazónica, una cultura indígena de la sierra y tenemos además, obviamente, los afrodescendientes. To the slave trade and more than 10 million African slaves being brought to the Latin American, Latin America area. Dr. Burge starts the conversation explaining the concept of colorism. Thinking about hair texture being straight as opposed to curly or kinky. Thinking about thin noses and thin lips or not broad lips or broad noses. So that's what we're typically talking about when we're thinking about uh, skin tone differentiation, uh, but also how we assign value to people of different hues, um, giving those who are lighter skinned and have those more Eurocentric features um, more primacy than we do individuals um, who are of darker complexion. Right, when we actually look at the data, we know that lighter skinned, or we find that lighter skinned people are more likely to have higher levels of education, they're more likely to have higher levels of income, rates of marriage, um, they receive the larger share of acting roles, darker skinned individuals are sentenced more harshly for committing the same crimes than lighter skinned individuals. It's not simply a, a, a Latinx or an African diaspora experience throughout the world. Um, there is this desire to conform to European standard, standards of beauty. In essence, what we are saying is that people create their own meaning, but not in conditions of their own choosing, if you understand what I'm saying. That we have ways of be, that our understandings uh, are shaped oftentimes by what we see on, on television. Este, el negro automáticamente es feo feo o hipersexual, si es hombre debe tener un pene descomunal. Eh, de hecho, en, el, en, en, en los medios de WhatsApp venezolanos circula una figura que llaman el negro de WhatsApp, que es un hombre con un pene que llega al piso, supuestamente. The media in Latin America still perpetuates images of black people often as ugly and intellectually inferior. A lot of this uh, has to, it, well, a lot of this I think involves change in terms of like media interpretations and what are these standards of beauty, these European standards of beauty that we're forcing upon people and what do we consider beautiful? Um, and so we have to start reprogramming ourselves um, and doing some introspective work uh, to start to change the relationship because the only way the systems are maintained is by the people. And so we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to contribute to the maintenance um, of the stratification of individuals based on skin tone? Una cosa interesante que veo es que el movimiento afrolatino de aquí, con sede en Estados Unidos, se está impactando en algo también, en, al menos en Perú, a, a partir de las campañas que se hacen, por ejemplo, para el cabello. ¿no? Nosotros teníamos la imagen de los Black Panthers o del movimiento afroamericano por los 70, ¿no? con el uso del cabello natural y de African Look. 
pero ahora es recién desde los últimos pocos años que, se, que me parece que hay un nuevo movimiento de cabello natural en Perú que está muy influenciado por movimientos afro-latinos en Estados Unidos. Entonces eso me parece también algo chévere que está pasando. This is